Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. Now it's getting quite late in the evening but there were just a few little jobs which I wanted to tick off the list today and the main job is to plant out the vegetable seedlings which I bought at the garden centre yesterday and they are leeks and kohlrabi. I'm also going to direct sow some pak choy this year as well. Um, I'm also going to give you a little bit of a tour of the allotment. There's not much to see, but I thought it was about time that I gave you a tour of the plot. But the first thing I'm going to do is harvest some potatoes. So this is what's left of the potato bed. There were originally only four rows in here. It's quite a small bed, um, but there is only one row left of potatoes to harvest. It's been a really, really good year for potatoes. I think that's down to the weather. I know last year we had a lot of sunshine and I think there was a two month period where we didn't have any rain at all, um, which made the potato crop suffer a lot. Um, whereas this year we've had lots of sunshine, lots of rain, um, and they've just thrived. I had two rows of Charlotte potatoes and two rows of Red Duke of York. Now, usually in this bed, I just grow the Jersey Royal potatoes, which are also known as international kidney. You're not allowed to call them Jersey Royals if they're not grown in Jersey. Um, and yeah, they're... They're usually pretty good, but I just thought I would try something different this year. Hence why I, why I grew the Charlotte and the Red Duke of York. And I've got to admit, I much prefer the Charlotte potatoes. They were so delicious, especially with lots and lots of butter on them. They were amazing. Um, and of course the crop was good as well. So um, the Charlotte potatoes were really good. The Red Duke of York, however, they suffered um, something called scab, which looks really unsightly, but they're still quite safe to eat. Just treat them as you would a normal potato. They're just not obviously that nice to look at. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna harvest a few of the Red Duke of York today to take home. We'll take on our camping trip next week. Um, I'd also just like to point out quickly that I grow the early salad potatoes on my plot and my dad grows the main potatoes. Um, I know quite a few people wonder why I don't grow any main potatoes, but that's just because I don't have the room. Um, and also I much prefer salad potatoes, like I said, with lots of butter. So let's dig up some of these Red Duke of York's. they're actually getting rather big now as you can see it's not so much a salad potato anymore i've left them in the ground far too long really what i should have done is just eaten them a lot quicker Right, that's it. The last row of Red Duke of York potatoes. Um, and I have to say, I don't think I'll grow this variety again. Yes, the colour is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Um, but I'm just a bit disappointed with the taste of them and also just because they got scab. I don't know if that's because I left them in the soil too long, um, but I do know that the Charlotte varieties never did get scab. Um, so yeah, a little bit disappointed with that, but they will still be eaten and enjoyed. 
Um, I think next year I might just grow four rows of Charlotte and see how I get on with them. Um, but anyway, this bed is where I will be planting out the leeks and I will be direct sowing some pak choy in here as well. So I'm just going to give it a quick little dig over, get rid of some of those weeds and then I can get planting out those leeks. the leeks nearly done now I like to grow leeks every single year and I usually do it in what I call the second growing season um, and that's when I take up crops which have been growing all year like the potatoes for instance and then I put some more plants in their place once they're harvested um, this year however I forgot to sow any leeks and I forgot to sow Swiss chard as well um, but luckily for me, I went to a garden centre and they had some seedlings there still. And I managed to pick up three trays of leek called Jolent. Now, I've never grown this variety before, but that was the only variety which they had on offer. So I thought I'm going to give them a go. I usually grow mussel borough leeks, uh, which are always pretty good. Um, but like I said, beggars can't be choosers. I'm going to have to have what they had in stock but it does say they are a very hardy plant having a white stem with blue green leaves. Um, so I'm hoping that, um, that they're gonna taste as nice as mussel borough. Um, but yeah, I'm quite excited to, to see what they're like. I love leeks anyway, so um, I'm sure they'll be pretty good. But I'll just quickly talk you through what I've done. I know I've planted out leeks before, but I'll quickly just go through it. So I use a dibber to plant out my leeks and I just create some holes about, about 10 to 15 centimetres deep. Um, and they are six inches apart. And then the rows are about a foot apart. Um, so yeah, they're about six inches deep, six inches apart. Um, by a foot apart in the rows and um, I've got three rows here and then all you do is you take your little leek seedlings and pop them in the holes you can give them a little bit of a twist just to get the roots down and then what I'll do after I've planted these and I've sown the seeds which I'm going to sow next door is I will fill each hole with water um, and then Hopefully they'll grow into nice tasty leeks. Um, but what I'm going to do next <laughs> is I'm going to sow some seeds next door to them. Now I know I said I was going to sow some pak choy, but I forgot my pak choy seeds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a few rows of Swiss chard instead and see if they grow. And then what I'll do in a couple of days, I will remember to bring my pak choy and I will sow a couple of rows in next to the Swiss chard. I've never tried pak choy before, so we'll see how that goes. So yeah, I'm just going to rake this over, create a shallow drill with my dibber, and then just sow my Swiss chard directly into them. Give everything a good water. 
and then sew my kohlrabi in the brassica cage now kohlrabi i've also never tried i tried growing it last year or the year before um but nothing ever came of it so when i saw these in the garden center with the leeks i thought hmm there's a little bit of space in my brassica cage i'm going to give them a go again so this variety is called Corist F1. Um, I've got two trays. There's only room for one row in the brassica cage. So I'm just going to put one row in to try it. So there's about 12 seedlings in each one. So there should be enough. Um, but yeah, super excited to see how these turn out and to see what they taste like. In fact, they do look rather delicious. So these will just be planted out 15 centimetres or six inches apart um, and yeah they'll be tucked under the net away from any pigeons trying to pull them up. So I'm going to do them and then before it gets dark I'm going to give you a quick little tour of the plot. So that's the kohlrabi and the leeks planted out and the swiss chard has been directly sown the potatoes have been harvested for our camping trip away later this week so all that's left to do is give you a little tour um, and i very nearly wasn't going to show you around the allotment um, just because i am a little bit ashamed of it <laughs> um, it's not the prettiest sight um, but you know that's what happens when you're busy and you can't be up here all the time and I think it's quite important to show the bad and the good side um, and the highs and the lows so I'm going to show you um, because obviously there's bad sides there's weedy areas but there are also things growing so it's not all bad um, but anyway before it gets too dark let's go for a little tour We will start with the shed, which is a complete and utter mess. I've got some Honesty, some Lunaria alba there drying out. It is actually dry now, but I just have nowhere to put it. But yeah, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess. A bit of a mess. And there are also some Scabious Stone Kugel drying. Also some straw flowers and some corn flowers there. 
but yeah it needs a really good tidy and I have a new resident Bert the bee I bought him from our good friends nature in steel and you can actually order from their website as well but I absolutely love him so that's the shed we'll go to the worst area first which is here it's just awful it's become the sort of dumping ground you can say the manure bin doesn't actually have any manure in it yet um, the comfrey I've just left to its own devices the rhubarb I never picked this year I only moved it there last year so I'm giving it a little bit of a rest and I also had no time to plant any sunflowers along the back like I usually do every year so yeah even the containers are a bit weedy um, but I do want to take all these bags of weeds and these twigs and things to the tip so that is one of the jobs over the next couple of weeks the trough does have a squash in there a butternut squash which is slowly growing and there's also a gherkin at the far end but I don't think it's gonna do anything this year and this is the flower patch looking very very bare very bare indeed the main reason for that is because I just wasn't able to pick the flowers this year the gladioli bloomed without me yeah I just wasn't able to pick anything this is scabious fata morgana again it's gone to seed I haven't been able to pick it is one of my signs cosmos fennel asparagus seed my straw flowers Ami Magus, I never picked any of that this year but one of my globe artichokes is flowering and I love it so much it's the first year I've ever had one flower I mean this is only two years old or one year old um, so yeah cornflowers practically dead I never had a cafule dahlia this year these were new this year though but yeah I haven't had one bloom feverfew never picked that rosemary's looking good at the back the apple tree has a new support because it was looking like it was gonna break um, I did actually have one apple from my James Greve apple tree but yeah just wasn't able to pick the flowers deadhead them or anything and they quickly just die back if you don't give them any love and attention but hey ho exactly same with the sweet peas they didn't climb very high but that's mainly because they went to seed i did get a few pickings from them though so it's not all bad but um yeah I think I went over what I'm going to do with this in my vlog. I'm going to put a climbing rose over that end one. And then probably just have munchkin pumpkins or something like that up the, these two at the end. Because sweet peas just need picking every single day. These two beds don't look too bad. The legume and the brassica bed <laughs> actually look okay. Um, there was meant to be some beans, soya beans, I think, growing up the wigwams. They never germinated. So there's some rather late um, climbing French beans here. And there's also a crown prince pumpkin in there somewhere, which is growing all the way along there. And if I can zoom in, there's a pumpkin on the wigwam I'm not sure which one I have a feeling it might be Tom Fox but yeah there's carrots in there somewhere and then this is just a mess 
I thought I would try and squeeze in as many courgettes and pumpkins as I possibly could. So there's two courgettes in there and three pumpkins. I had absolutely no courgettes this year, absolutely none. But again, there's a Crown Prince pumpkin growing there. And there's another pumpkin at the back there. And also the sweet corn is looking great. So again, I can't really complain. The brassicas are all looking good. There's a few gaps, a few gaps there, but um, yeah, they're, they're doing fine with some zinnias in there for some extra beauty. Uh, just planted the kohlrabi along there. Then there's red cabbage, kale, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts and purple sprouting at the end. And then the old potato bed, which now has some Swiss chard and some leeks in. And then I'm going to put some pak choy here. Radish tank was a complete disaster and there's bindweed growing everywhere. Um, but the fruit cage was really, really productive this year. The bindweed just looks awful, but um, I did replant the raspberries at the back there. I gave them a really good tidy and the two gooseberries produced an amazing crop this year. So, so good. Um, again, there's rogue raspberries growing around there, which needs sorting out and the bindweed. <laughs> now the four black currants. Um, actually, my mum came up and helped me pick some of these in between a show because it was really hectic. And two, I think these two here were ripe and these two weren't. So we picked a humongous crop from these two. Um, and then we were just too busy to pick these ones. Um, but I made some jam with these and it's, oh, it's my favorite jam. So the last area is the wildlife patch, which I sort of just let be this year. As you can see, it's completely wild. I have no idea what is growing around there at all. I don't even know where this came from, but it's pretty. Grapevine just has a mind of its own. <laughs> and still no grapes. Still no grapes. I also have a new birdhouse up on the shed, which actually had some blue tits in there this year, which oh, I just love. It was really nice to watch. And of course, I basically missed my rose bush blooming this year, which I was absolutely gutted about. Absolutely gutted. Uh, but yeah. That's the, that's the allotment. In the height of summer. <laughs> but what I have been enjoying this year is watching the birds on my bird table. They've absolutely loved it. So yeah, a bit of a mess, a bit crazy, a bit weedy, but it's still my little haven. So that's that. All the jobs have been completed, which I wanted to do today, which is great. Um, it's really starting to get dark now, so I'm going to head home for a cup of tea. But first of all, I'm going to feed the birds because I bought some new fat balls because they absolutely love fat balls. They go through them so quickly. I'm pretty sure there's either like a squirrel or the pigeons just eat them all. But um, I like to put a few fat balls out, put some seed and some mealworms on the tray um, and just welcome birds into the pot because it's really important to feed the birds. Um, but also just quite nice to watch them um, they're a huge distraction but they are really nice to watch um, but yeah 
I'm going to head on home, have a cup of tea. I haven't had a cup of tea in a few hours, which is crazy. But I really, really hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Thank you.